right, we're going. Hopefully this sounds good. Welcome, everybody, to the Buckethead Podcast. I am Buckets, Taylor, TXTV, whatever you want to call me. Um, I'm joined here by my first, not my first guest, my my second guests, Will, William, and Forrest. Forrest goes by Umbra Zero now. He used to be Lazy Pool, but he's having an identity crisis because he's old. Um, <laughs> it happens. It happens. It, it happens. Um, and today, I've appropriately named this one Star Wars Before Disney, a prequel kid story, right? Um, and realistically, the meaning behind this and the reason I wanted to do this is that uh, I feel, and I kind of told this to Forrest before we started, I feel that a lot of people nowadays are like, oh, when I was growing up with the prequels and they, they would have done this and they would have done this. But like so many people and that people also are like, oh, I was bullied for liking Star Wars when I grew up and all this stuff. But like no one really talks about like the positive shit that they yeah. th- that they went through, like all the like the good memories they have and stuff like so many people are talking about. You know, I got made fun of people when it talked to me, girls when it date me, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But no, <laughs> like, like there's a reason you stuck around with it at, for however many years it's been. Yeah. And people don't really talk about that. So today, I kind of wanted to just open up the floodgates for you two because you two are like my two of my oldest Star Wars friends, right? Um, I've known Will forever and I've known Forrest forever. And um, we've both we've we've <laughs> we've all gone through some shit, but I've never really known what Star Wars was like for people that weren't me growing up. I've never known real like people's intros and all that stuff to Star Wars. So that's kind of what I wanted to ask. I think I'll direct questions first to Will, and then Forrest when he's done. If you want to just if you want like like usual, you know how we yeah. do. you know how we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Will, first thing I want to I want to ask is really what what was your introduction to Star Wars? Like, how was it? Like, you saw the 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 OT first or prequels first or what was it? Oh, I mean, it's hard to say what specific film I was exposed to first because, like, mm-hmm. when you grow up in a Star Wars household, it it's just it's it's present. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. you see a movie before you're even like old enough to register what it is and Uh it's like is that your first memory or you know i remember my first memory of star wars vividly was being left home when everyone else went to go see the phantom menace in theaters yeah (laughs) yeah yeah i was left at home yeah it's like oh like he's so little he's not gonna be able to understand and it's fine it would would waste a ticket you know it was it was adult time and like my brother was old enough to go i think my sister you know it wasn't adult time i was like the only one left at home like I got, they had a babysitter or something. Yeah. Um, and I, I vividly remember like seeing all the stuff for it, you know, no one was coming out, everyone went and then I just, I, I didn't get to see it. So, <laughs> so you're the first time, your first memory of star Wars wasn't even being able to see it for the first time. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Cause like growing up, I was exposed to enough original trilogy stuff at home that when the prequel trilogy was coming out, like I was stoked about it, despite not really, understanding what was going on. And I did by the time episode two came out, right? Mm-hmm. Like I went and saw that in theaters. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just funny that it's just kind of, it's always present when yeah. other people around you care so much about it. A hundred percent. Like, do you think like kind of fast forwarding in time, is it there just kind of it existing and always being a thing and not really a conscious choice to watch? How do you feel what if you were ever to be like, oh hey, should I watch Star Wars? Because I, you know, I know like some of us is a lot of uh, some of us as fans, we get asked by non fans, what movie should I start with? What should I start with? How does it make you feel when you think of like if you weren't exposed to it and you kind of were just like, oh well, should I watch it? Like, well, there's just so much extra content now, right? That people look at that and it's really intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I spent some time in India and I, I had a friend who had never seen a Star Wars movie. He's like, okay, explain Star Wars to me. And the more words that came out of my mouth, the more I was like, Star Wars is really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dumb. 100%. Yeah. It really is. And that's why, like, when people complain about, like, all the new Disney Star Wars stuff, like, they're valid complaints. Like, a lot of the quality has dipped for sure mm-hmm. from some of the stuff that we expect that's, like, way up here. But, like, 
Star Wars has always been stupid. And if people are like, that's stupid when something comes out, I'm like, I know. It's because it's Star Wars. <laughs> You're it doesn't mean to like it. More accurate. But like, I mean, the, the original trilogy is about a kid from a farm who goes on a space adventure with a wizard and a talking bear to fight a, a guy farm. who dresses like, you know, emo pug. You know, he's got like a pug face, you know, like. <laughs> and there's lightning and the spaceships that fly around in space have dog fights and there's no air and it's just it's stupid yeah but we love it anyway we love it we love it uh forrest what about you what was your first exposure to star wars oh uh, my first exposure to star wars um i remember how old i was i was young enough that i just didn't know anything honestly mm. and i walked into the living room and my dad was watching he had the collector set you know the black and gold yeah. shiny box set the, oh yeah I think that was the final special edition release on vhs mm-hmm. um and it was the tauntaun scene in empire and i looked at him like why is there a bunch of worms on the screen and then i don't remember anything <laughs> after that because of the guts yeah, yeah. oh <sighs> but when it comes to the prequels i only knew about them when my i would go over to my grandma's house and she would have the new one when it came out and she'd put it on i never even knew that anything else I never even knew a movie theater existed until fucking like sixth grade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I just remember watching them at my, the prequels at my grandma's house. And afterwards holidays, it was always uh, my uncles having uh, just quote offs and who can name yeah. this quote from what, what episode, what scene, all that fun stuff. But yeah, those are my earliest memories of Star Wars. Seeing the Tauntaun guts on screen. Yeah. So, I I'll I'll, I'll give mine. Um, my first exposure to Star Wars, I don't remember the year. Um, all I remember is like like these two know I have a very big family, right? And oh, yeah. if you buy Huge. toy, if if you're gonna buy toys for one of the boys in the family, you're basically buying toys for all of them. So my two older brothers, um had uh it was like a small little replica of the uh the freaking endor blast door satellite thingy ma oh that that's console, cool that they, yeah that they blow up and i remember I, we were playing with that and then they just had a uh, return of the jedi on um and i really just didn't like connect the dots that this went to this um i just remember the sounds and stuff i didn't sit down and watch it and so when the prequels were coming around to me i feel like i was blindsided by them like obviously not being an ot fan you didn't really like i didn't have expectations for the prequels right um so i I felt kind of blindsided i felt like i was just kind of thrown into the theater like oh hey we're gonna go see the star wars thing that you know nothing about um and it was kind of like just a thing so like I didn't really grasp that Star Wars was Star Wars until the merchandise started hitting. Like when it was toys and all that different stuff. Um, like the movies were kind of second nature to me as like a young kid. Cause obviously like the slow talking scenes and whatnot, which I didn't hate. Um, but it was really just like the movies are, are Star Wars, but the, the toys are Star Wars. That's we're spending yeah. more money on the toys. So that's what you got to play with. That's what you got to pay attention to. Um, so that's wild. Uh, Will is <laughs> that you were left home. <laughs> that's cr- I've never heard anything like that before. And Forrest, traumatized by the Tauntaun guts. <laughs> so the next one for me is, and how do I word this? Because like I said, all my notes have just disappeared um, off my phone. <laughs> but it always happens. Yeah, it always happens. I'm coming down from the freaking cabin. I'm like, all right, let's go. I put on, I, I, I type out all the notes. I put my headphones in, you know, zonk off for a little bit, come back, set everything up, notes, gone. Um, but I guess my thing is, when did Star Wars, like, feel like Star Wars? Like, what was a moment in the prequels where you were just like, that's that to me is something that you just grasped onto. And you're like, that's Star Wars for me. And that's 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 starting with Will. I mean, it's a hundred percent 
the moment those those sliding doors open, right? And then Darth Maul just standing there. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's the coolest scene in it's arguably the coolest scene in all of Star Wars. Oh, 100 percent I would I mean I would I would say it is the coolest scene in all of Star Wars. Um and that's that's where it starts, right? As a kid, you don't remember everything about a movie you watch. Um, you just remember the good parts, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The parts that really catch your attention. And I don't know anybody who watches episode one and isn't just like jumping out of their seat yeah. every time that scene comes on, no matter how many times you've seen it. Like it is so cool. And then there's 100%. this long wait between episode one and episode two coming out. And that's really all you have to think about is like that cool thing and yeah. how much more cool thing you want to see. Exactly. Exactly. And that, God, I've thought about this question a lot in my head. I, I don't know why I didn't even put that there. Like, I'm like, damn, man, Will, you took it. You got, you got, you got the good one. What about you, Forrest? When you, what was, what, what was it? That exact, that exact same scene. But also, for me, one of my favorite scenes is just the little subtle scene when Qui Gon and Obi Wan save Padme the first time on Naboo when they're being escorted by yeah, the droids. Yeah. That's one. That's an iconic Star Wars scene for me too. Despite Jar Jar being there, yeah, Jar, 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 we like Jar Jar in this house. We we we, <laughs> we we accept him. I actually don't know if he's on this background banner that I have, that I totally didn't grab at the last second. <laughs> I don't <laughs> see I, him. He he. I don't think he's in there. Yeah, but it also looks like it zoomed in a bit. It it, it did. definitely is. It did. Yeah. I put it up. I had it scaled to something, and I, I don't know how to work this hundred percent yet, man. Forrest, leave yeah. me alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, okay, so for me, and this is like, it's not even like a small, subtle thing. To me, the moment I grasped onto as a kid and in the theater and still nerd out to this day is just all the Jedi in the Geonosis arena. Yeah. Igniting their, ignite, not even the fight, but just igniting their sabers. Stupid little, little um, memory lane thing for me is back when we would go to the movie theater my dad used to smuggle in like the giant candy bars with the tin foil around them. Yeah. Um, and me and my, my cousin were sitting there and we're watching it. We're just scarfing down the chocolate, you know, during the previews and we eat it. And like that scene comes up and I don't know how theaters are now, but there was our seats, a little landing, like maybe two, three foot landing. And then a yeah, railing you, for people. To, you can yeah, put yeah. your feet up on the railing, right? Yeah. 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 So around that time, like we had like rolled the tinfoil up into like lightsaber hilts and we're pretending <laughs> that they were lightsabers. So whenever lightsabers would come up on screen, we jump out of our seats in the theater and start swinging the lightsabers around like, or the lightsabers around like we're, we're like we're um, like we're the Jedi. And my aunt and mom got so pissed. <laughs> every time we'd get up not even that like we were in the way but people would just kind of snicker and i didn't know that they were snickering until like a couple of years ago when i was talking to her about this um and so when the actual charge happens in the geonosis arena when the jedi are charging the droids like it was all bets were off so like so that that was what but like the darth oh man it can't it doesn't get better than the doors opening in darth maul though like Mm-mm. Duel of the Fates hitting the second those doors open, and then because like up until that point we didn't have a reveal on his on his two blades, yeah, we didn't really know fully what he looked like, and then when the hood comes off and he's got the horns and stuff, I'm like, all right, this is real shit. <laughs> this is oh yeah, this is real shit. Um, so excuse me for being so ill prepared. But with with that, I kind of wanted to ask, um, what was it like in that to the to the to the sad part of things? What was it like? And Will, I think you can speak to this too, really for you. And I guess this question is more aimed at you. What was it like being a person of color back then? Not back then, but during that time, and growing up with Star Wars and wanting to like play with characters or pretend to be a character that wasn't like our same skin tone yeah i mean like i'm grateful to have not grown up during the uh, the original trilogy period mm. where like if you're slightly darker than a piece of paper 
you have to play Lando. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like yeah. you're stuck as Lando, which like Lando is cool, but I mean, it's Lando. He doesn't get a like, lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and we all want to know what it would be like if, if Lando got a lightsaber. No one would let us even think about that. So, um, no, it was kind of funny because like Star Wars didn't have a lot of racial representation, even in the prequels, right? You, like there's the one black guy and he's cool. But like it's the one black guy, and I, you know, I always wanted to do Star Wars stuff for like Halloween and stuff. I shaved my head in sixth grade I to be Mace Windu. Yeah, this. yeah, <laughs> and like got hella made fun of because Star Wars wasn't cool back then. Yeah. Um, but that was pretty much it, you know. And I think it's it's nice because as a kid, there's a lot going on in these movies, and you don't really notice the lack of representation in the film it's only when you step away from the media that that starts to come up. You start to notice that. Yeah, I think sure. the truth is that everyone just enjoys the film when they're in the film. And then, you know, the, the difficult things we have to deal with in regards to race, they, those things, they come from other stuff outside. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. That's, and, and, and that was really like, like I was lucky enough to grow up with a, another, like I had, like I had you, I had your sister, and then I had, uh, as people know, Jay. Um, I had Jay, but that that was the thing that kind of sucked when we would play like uh, Phantom Menace, right? Star Wars, because you could only be per- the person who was during that time, and it was stuck somewhat. Jay would always be Mace Windu, and I had to be fecking Panaka. And <laughs> I'm like, you don't want to be goddamn oh, Panaka. No. Like I have what three lines, and they're all being defiant and a dickhead. Like, yeah, oh. well, you are defiant dickhead, so you see yeah. now where it came from. Though. <laughs> I was Panaka my whole childhood. Um, but no, to, to point the, the question at you for us, it's not necessarily more about race. It's it's more. What was it like just coming up with Star Wars and like interacting with maybe like I'm not sure what kid didn't have star wars but it was like what was it like when you would everyone was a closet star wars fan exactly but what was it like when you weren't so closeted and then the people who wanted to remain closeted would make like fun of you for shit maybe that was just me but what was it like interacting with people who weren't like huge star wars fans back then um well the thing is okay like i just said everyone was a closeted star wars fan so i didn't really interact with people and when it came to star wars unless it was my mom's friend kid my mom's friend's son gage Mm -hmm. we'd go me and my mom go over to her house me and him go in backyard lightsabers and just uh we'd go through the whole roster just fighting with lightsabers every time we killed each other we'd switch to a different character and for some reason i spent a lot of time as grievous i don't know why but (laughs) because you probably freaking going akimbo damn it well we didn't have enough lightsabers to akimbo Okay, fair enough. But so, so your imagination's like, for. Yeah, I didn't have an imagination. I still don't. Um, but like oh, in school and stuff, it. still just didn't really deal with Star Wars in school. Like there was one time though, I still feel bad about it. We were doing an art project, and my buddy Kenneth um, was just doing the opening title scroll, just Star Wars with the black uh, space backdrop. He did it out of um paper like he poked got white cardstock black cardstock poked painstakingly so poked holes in the card black cardstock so the white would come through for stars and then he cut out um the lettering and pasted on there for his art project and everyone's like oh why you been doing star wars star wars sucks i'm like yeah star wars sucks and then i went home and watched star wars and i still don't oh, know <laughs> uh, but that's the only real memory i have of actually discussing star wars in school until i met mm. you taylor yeah uh i guess so i don't know if you guys i think the wildest interaction i ever had it wasn't even a negative one right um it was i don't know if you guys know this person but ian wild you guys yeah, I remember ian. you remember the wilds yeah. uh ian and i were pretty close in uh elementary school but we stopped being close in elementary school for one reason his dad was such a huge Star Wars nerd, and he had like the, like the collector's edition doll, like a Darth Vader that made sound, and the helmet came off, and all this stuff. 
it was like this tall, it had lightsabers, he had Luke and Obi-Wan and Chewie and Han and all these other figures. And uh, Ian came over one day and I was like, yeah, bring it all over, man. I ain't got shit. I ain't got no toys. I ain't got nothing. I did have toys. Um, and so like, I just wanted to have like an army of things to play with. Well, he came over and something happened and his mom, um, God, I'm going to fucking expose myself. <laughs> it is it's going on the internet, you know, it, it is, it is, um, long story short, he had to leave early and he, he forgot some things behind. Because he had to rush real quick, and I get a call. Hey, did I leave that over there? And I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't see it. So the thing he left was an Anakin Episode Two flick out lightsaber, mm. like the um, trashy ones with like the really thin blades. Yes, the really th like just yeah, like it's like light blue, right? It's not light, like a it... light blue. You could shine a light through it. Yeah, I have two of those. You still have them? Yeah, one of them's like kind of busted, but yeah, I got two of those. I'm gonna need to cop one because they came back and took it. Because <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> like, they're like, no, we can't find it anywhere. We can't find it anywhere. And like, just a like a, a couple days of just avoiding phone calls. Um, <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, That's awful. I'm like, yeah, it's like I either I said it was here, or like my mom had called and said, oh yeah, we found it. I'm pretty um, sure it was your mom. Probably. It's always a mom ratting you out. Yeah, probably. I, I can't remember. But then I had to take it to him to school the next day. And it was like giving up a firstborn, man. Like, I loved that thing so much. Uh, and then the following Christmas, I actually got uh, his, like, the chrome one that was, like, the Jedi training one that had the sound and everything and mm -hmm. that lit up. But it, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> like, So I guess that's the next, you know, positive thing I want to ask is William and Forrest. What's like the coolest Star Wars thing you had or were gifted like Christmas or whatnot? Because back in the day, everybody used to call their friend and talk about shit they got for Christmas. Oh, well, man. Being a prequel. I'm going to go look for it. Okay. Will, while he okay. does that, what's yours? It's it's hard to like put a pin in like the best one because like yeah. there's so many years of Star Wars, right? Um, to this day, I still have the action figure scale Millennium Falcon that lights up. So that's pretty cool. The, uh, um, the one that had, like you can pull the back out and it's got the whole yeah oh no way yeah and, like you you know you press the buttons it's got like the takeoff so like the lights like, like the yellowish white lights turn on and then the yeah, blue yeah. ones come on for hyperspace and yeah the, yes. the whole thing and you know like it's obviously not to proper scale right yeah. like you, you can fit one dude in the cockpit it is not realistic at all yeah but it's super cool like the landing gear comes down you know um, and I never had any like matching sets of things. So I never had like a TIE fighter to go with the Millennium Falcon. Like mm. I've got like the, like the Republic gunship. So I'm sitting here with like the <laughs> wrong eras flying around, you know, but, yep. but the action figure stuff was cool, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, that, that was probably the coolest stuff. Hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. What about you Forrest? So this is the biggest thing that I ever had for Star Wars. And I, as far as I know, the first thing I had, it's quite beat up. You're going to be mad at me when I show you, Taylor, because it's something that you've been telling me to give to you. But Oh, the land speeder. Yeah, it's quite beat up. The landing, the wheels still eject out on it. So what? you can roll it around. I remember having... R2 and C3PO right here. I don't remember if I had Luke and Kenobi. I might have, but yeah, like you can see, it's quite beat up. But I still have it. It still sits on my desk. But that was my first and my my favorite thing because I still have it. Heck yeah! Heck yeah! That's a good piece. Oh, um, um, as far so... as figures go, I only ever really had Star Killer and Vader figures. Those are good figures. You have a who killer now? Star killer. Uh, why didn't you tell me about this? I showed you them. I have the bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, those you did. Bullshit. If you, if you what? told me about it, you wouldn't be owning it. Yeah, that's why you don't come over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they are right now, but it's um normal Star Killer, Jedi ending, and then Sith ending for Force Unleashed one. 
Oh, that's cool. That's some bullshit. I like that. <laughs> um, so for me, so weirdly enough, I'm I'm not gonna get into lore just yet about what movies are the favorites, but the movie I was exposed to the most was The Phantom Menace, or not The Phantom Menace. Sorry, uh, Attack of the Clones. So what the 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 toy that I got that really just blew my mind that I really haven't seen around lately it was Zam's little speeder. Um, she has Zam, a speeder. The little the little speeder. Oh yeah. Oh the yeah. yeah. The like the like the little like yeah. Yeah, the one that crashes in Coruscant. Um, I had no idea what it was until like I had to look at the back and I actually had to read as a kid. We don't do that anymore. Um, mm-hmm. but I but like it was like all plastic and then the two little pillars at the front of it were rubber and they could mm-hmm. like smash in as if it crashed oh that's cool. i didn't know that that's yeah it, it was crazy if i could if i could pull it up let me see if i can pull it up real quick um but no, i'm gonna that, look it up too yeah for sure um zam with cell speeder I didn't know those were rubber because like i still have the uh like the catalogs that tell you what all the toys are that you can buy yeah, and I I know the toy you're talking about. Well, it's on eBay for twenty nine dollars. Yeah, this is it. What? This is it. And it comes go- with an Anakin speeder too. I'm gonna I'm gonna show uh just share my screen real quick. Um oh my gosh, why is this so difficult? You know that's a oh that thing's Anakin. worth like a lot of money apparently. So let me. Sorry, I don't mean to do this. We're probably gonna. Okay. This is my first time streaming on this, and I'm actually really excited to share this. So, let's see. Entire screen. Uh, this right here. Oh, you're right. Those parts do come off. So, right here, it's uh, it's this thingamabobber. Yeah, these, yeah, like, like Will just saw these the little plates right here. So, these mm-hmm. little plates popped off, and then these all collapsed. Uh-huh. The weird thing is, is like these would collapse or these would pop off and I lost them the first time. So I'm running around with a janky ass speeder. Like, what the heck, dude? Um, But yeah, that's that's my like my favorite. um, If I can forget, I have multiple monitors here. But yeah, that's that's my favorite thing, because I've never really like I follow a lot of toy shops and collector shops on uh, on my socials and stuff. But I don't. I don't see people post that stuff, like a lot of vintage stuff. And I'm like, oh, maybe it's because, you know, not very many people like care to admit that they like Attack of the Clones more than like the public will let them. Um, it's an OK yeah. film. Like it's, it's got some good action sequences. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely not yeah. the worst thing we've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, I mean the story is not to do, but, you know, <laughs> I watch it until um, let's see what part do I usually fall asleep. But I know I fall asleep before. Right around the Naboo stuff, and then I conveniently wake up right as the arena stuff happens. The, I can, I Ballad. have to like, as as a kid, the the Tuscan Raider camp stuff always scared the shit out of me. Like it always, like it always scared the hell out of me. I I couldn't fall asleep during that. Hang on, I gotta let the cat out. Oh, for sure. No. Yeah, um, that well, bit didn't scare me. It would all, it would make me sad make me sad more than anything well it, it was the it was the part where after anakin's mom dies and the, sh- the music starts dee, 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 and i'm like because okay so a little backstory and this is the lord just while while will's up and about um so so a little story time real quick i don't mean to make this whole thing about me but the reason that scene scared the scares the ever-living shite out of me is because when I was a when I was a young warthog, um, I had this friend named Reese, and at Reese's oh, Reese. I would you you've heard this story for us, yeah. Basically, Reese was obsessed with Attack of the Clones, and I spent I think two nights in a row sleeping over at Reese's house, and that's all we would watch in the evening tonight was Attack of the Clones over and over. And then we'd fall asleep to it, and it would be the the DVD menu playing over and over and over and over. Well, the first night I'm sleeping, it gets to that part where the strings hit after Anakin's mom dies, and the soundtrack is really fecking crazy because he's pissed off. And that yeah. jump scared me awake. Like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? And all I see is angry, hating Christensen in my face. 
<laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, traumatized. Get traumatized 100%. Well, weirdly enough, that traumatized me, but watching Anakin burn to death, or not to death, but straight up burn, burn, alive. burn alive, didn't do anything to me. Nobody bad an eye. Nobody bad an eye. <laughs> um, so... We've we've covered a lot, and how how long we've we been going? We've only been going thirty minutes. We're fine. Um, yeah. I just, it's just, it's just, it's crazy to me, and we'll kind of we'll kind of start bleeding into the 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 acquisition of Star Wars, right? So, when all this time, I'll ask you, and I'll, Will, you can answer this first if you'd like. When Revenge of the Sith came out, were you ever like, oh, hey, this is what we should do to you know, to a sequel trilogy, or did you feel like, oh, hey, this actually bridges three and four fine? Like when Revenge of the Sith came out? I mean... Yeah, did you feel like we needed anything else from Star Wars? Or are you like, hey, this is the story, cool? Well, it felt like the story was done. Because mm -hmm. this is pre-Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? This is before mm -hmm. the idea of never-ending franchises existed. Um... And so it's like, okay, like, they're done, right? Mm -hmm. And people talked about, like, oh, too bad they couldn't have made more movies after the original trilogy. But nobody thought they were going to get the old actors back. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that wasn't even a question back yeah. then. Um, and nobody thought they were going to make TV shows to fill in the gaps between the movies, right? Um, I think that back then there was a lot more satisfaction with the product. Right, it was just like, hey, here's this cool thing we get to love and adore, even if it's imperfect, and we're gonna do it for a really long time, mm -hmm. or pretty much forever, because there is no promise of additional content. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, it's like a a kid who is spoiled their whole life versus a kid who you know grew up poor. Right, the kid who grew up poor, kind of grateful for what they've got. Right. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you know now that we're so spoiled, I think we've gotten really ungrateful for what we have. 100%. Like, that's probably exactly. the best take I've ever heard when it comes to uh, people, what people are like, they want more, they want this, they want it to be this way. And I feel so, I feel people get so lost as to what they want to happen opposed to, like, I, I know a lot of people, like, yeah. oh, don't, don't be, don't be, ha you know, you're getting fed sludge and stuff like that. Like, they're, they're focused on what they want and what can be better and what should be better opposed to, uh, opposed to like, hey, back in the day you weren't expecting anything like you yeah be happy for what you've got in a sense what and I if i might add i think we were a lot more appreciative of alternative forms of media um because growing up i read a bunch of star wars books and i feel like the books aren't as important to the lore these days because like mm -hmm. you just know they're going to make a canon show that retcons it in like a yeah. week yeah and, and they said they were never going to retcon ever again and they've already taken canon books and decanonized them for Dave Filoni's pet projects. Mr. Filoni, you... <laughs> I look. I, I have to be honest with the, with the podcast viewership. If Dave Filoni has one hater, it is me. <laughs> I don't think and, I've ever heard that. Oh, no, man. no. Here's the thing: Dave Filoni gets credited for all these cool things he did. Ooh, I'm like. Okay, start listing cool things he's done. They're like, well, Darth Maul coming back from that. I'm like, like that comic that he ripped off? <laughs> and they're like, but what about Ahsoka Tano? I'm like, Ahsoka Tano is just like a cheap knockoff of like three or four different Legends characters that he just pieced together, right? Mm -hmm. Like, dude literally just read all of Jude Watson's books and was like, oh, Ferris Olin. What if Ferris Olin was a kid and female? And then just like ripped the entire story arc leaves the Jedi Order, joins the Rebellion, fights Darth Vader, finds out he was Anakin Skywalker, they're like, the whole shebang. Yeah. Like, it was already in Legends, and Dave Filoni's credited for a lot of those ideas when they're totally not his. Exactly. And a lot of them are executed poorly. Like, Star Wars Rebels Season 1, excellent. Every other season of that show is just Dave Filoni playing with his favorite toys, Darth Maul and Mandalorians. Well, I'm so glad we're in the same boat, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. I could go on for hours. Someone else talk now, please. please. I actually, I actually made a video a while ago because uh, the, the the 
the switch up in the community when Dave Filoni put out something that they didn't like, and they're like, oh, he needs to stay away from Star Wars forever. But for however many years, since 2008 to now, everyone's like, Dave Filoni needs to take over. He takes it over, and the first yeah. thing he pumps out on his own is the Book of Boba Fett, something that doesn't have anything to do with anything we've gotten that he can play with from the Clone Wars. What does he do? He interjects Ahsoka in there and Order 66 into a show about Boba Fett. Like, anyway, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, it's, and, he can't stay away from his favorite toys. He just has to pull them out of the toy box and use them in every single thing. Yeah, and it's, the, the, the cat's out of the bag now. Like, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> Yeah, and, like, it was cool to see more Mandalorian stuff for a minute, right? For, like, two seconds. He doesn't even like Boba Fett, man. Like, to be honest, for a guy who is obsessed with Mandalorians, he didn't do anything with Boba Fett up until he was forced to make a show about Boba Fett. Yeah. And then he tanked the show about Boba Fett. I'm convinced Dave Filoni just hates Boba Fett. I, I don't disagree with you there. I, Probably, I, yeah. I don't disagree with you there. I, I've made so many videos. Well, I have I've made two videos about the book of Boba Fett. We did a whole podcast review thing, and I have a video sitting in my editing software right now um that i'm editing because someone on um insta or uh, twitter had posted something saying genuine question for star wars fans why do people hate the book of boba fett so much and i'm like okay let me tell you <laughs> but but yeah so that and that's just kind of the thing too is is like i the the mini series for the clone wars i love that i love that mm -hmm. I, I thought i thought that was great it it kind of took things up to the line without crossing it, without overstepping, without like overstaying its welcome realistically. And I feel that <sighs> there were several arcs of the Clone Wars. And I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Like I watched the Clone Wars for the clones and I, I've said this before. I don't really care about Ahsoka. Like she's a, she's a great character. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Like it's hard to not, it's hard to mention badass female Star Wars characters and not mention Ahsoka Tano, right? Exactly. Yeah, and badass, that's true. Badass characters in general, right? But, like, to me, I'm like, if her death was in Rebels, that would have made her so much better, in my opinion. Like, Facts. Like, Facts. Uh, just... She did die in Rebels, and I then mean, they retconned. Time <laughs> travel, did she die? I mean, like, is this an alternate timeline? Like... Those are questions we don't need to answer. I think it's just obvious that she's the character that Dave won't let end. And I think that allowing good things to end makes them good, right? Like, we love Obi-Wan, but Obi-Wan's right time to die is episode four, right? Yeah. Yep. So Ahsoka dying sometime between episode three and four is appropriate. There's really not a lot of places for her character to go post episode four. And yeah. we saw that in Ahsoka's own show. She has no character development in that entire show. She is a static character. She doesn't change, doesn't have any, like, revelations that change her the way she sees the world. She's just, like, you know, the same. I didn't yeah. even watch Ahsoka. I didn't care to. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the action scenes are cool. Yeah. Well, that's what I, what I tell people, uh, like... I've had some back and forth on Instagram, because, like, no matter what I do, no matter what I post about, like... If I like something or didn't like something or had a, a criticism with something, I get DMs, I get responses to my stories, and I'm like, okay, let's chat, let's chat. And I asked someone, I was like, realistically, what is one notable thing about Ahsoka that wasn't hearkening back to the Clone Wars, that whole Anakin worlds between worlds thing? Like, tell me one thing that was, like, badass that wasn't that or Balin's skull. <laughs> I was going to say Balin's skull. Uh, I mean, okay, here's the thing. I really enjoy, uh, I don't I can't remember what his name, the, the guy who plays Ezra, I think he did a good job. Um, of all the Rebels characters who got turned into live action characters, like, you know, different actor, right? I think he's the only one that truly did a good job of impersonating the animated character. Mm. Um, I, I know that the actress who plays uh, Hera is like, I think it's, she's married to yeah, Ewan yeah. McGregor. Someone yeah. fact check me on that. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, Elizabeth something. I can't remember. And I loved her in Sky High, but she's just a wooden actress. She's so <laughs> flat and boring in the way that she acts. It's like super monotone the entire time she's on screen. And I'm like, that doesn't feel like Hera. Yep. Uh, so, 
It is Mary Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. Yeah, and everyone was like, she's such a great actress. And I was like, awesome, great, can't wait to see it. And then we see it, and it's just like, so this person didn't watch the source material. Good to know. <laughs> uh, it's like, what's his face? We played the Inquisitor in Kenobi. Didn't watch the source material intentionally. Like, what are you doing? When you could have brought in Jason freaking Isaacs. They couldn't have. Scheduling conflict. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's why that happened, apparently. I mean, I'm like, I wasn't there, but I read on the internet that they wanted him and he wasn't available. And, don't and the internet sense. never lies. Yeah, and here's the thing. <laughs> Regardless of if they'd gotten Jason, Jason Isaacs back, they still wouldn't have given him the tall head like he's supposed to have. Like they did in the freaking episode three? Like, well, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm okay, sorry. who is it? I can't remember who it is because I think I like blocked them on TikTok because they were so annoying. And like, I'm not a... I'm not a content creator, so it's not beef. It's just like your opinions are stupid. It's like some Asian dude. He all he does is just like, just. Are are, are we allowed? To, are we allowed to curse and say dirty words on this show? Yeah, yeah, we can we can cuss. Yeah. Uh, what's the word the kids use? Glaze. He just glazes all Disney Star Wars so hard, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, well, like all the rebels' proportions are longer, so like, ergo, the Inquisitor's supposed to have a short head." It, it's 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 accurate and i'm like rebels elongates heads that don't need to be elongated heads that are already long dave filoni and the direction of the team whoever was doing the art right they kind of leave them alone yeah and so like just and, look at episode three we've seen that species we've seen yeah, them exactly and that's kind of my kind of pushing more into disney star wars as we are um that's really my thing is like like if you like something you like something great but don't like your explanation for something isn't the reason why it is that way because the show and the company yeah. haven't explained that that's why it is. It's bad. And even like it's, it's, I, it's the same reason for me of hating the helicopter lightsabers. I'm like, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't use that in live action. Cause it's stupid. <laughs> when, when, like, he gets yeah. so mad about those like, sabers oh my, so often. Well, that, well, that's just, like, they make that, no sense. Well, that's really dumb. I think I said it in our in our review of Kenobi. It's like, oh, Reva, Reva didn't die. How did she get? How did she get to freaking Tatooine? Oh, well, she uh, just helicopter lightsabered her way to Tatooine. Because apparently, you can yeah. last that long with it. Whatever. We're not going to get into that. But <laughs> but so the next question I have for the both of you is, and don't fucking quote what I think you're going to quote for us. Um, when you found out Disney ha had acquired Star Wars. What did you guys think? What was your what was your do thoughts? it for us? Do it for us. Quote it. I don't know what he wants me to quote. Good. Oh. Um, good. good. I think I know. The socks. No, it's that fucking that oh. fucking parody of um it when it's Vader and Luke, the parody of them fighting on Bespin and they start singing Disney songs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will never join you. That's what I thought you were going <laughs> to freaking sing. Because someone had posted that like a couple years and made that parody a couple years before Disney acquired Star Wars. And they're like, like, if they're, they're like, like, if five years. Yeah. They're like, if Disney acquired Star Wars and then boom, they make I'm like, oh, shit. Well, yeah. Uh, Forrest, if you want to go first and not fucking quote that, what was your <laughs> thoughts of on when you found out like oh hey because that was like i think we were still in high school like 2012 wasn't it yeah, yeah. was it 2012 it was 2012 2013 right after they got uh avengers came out or something or other because they yeah uh, okay i was hopeful for it you know because um all i really got to experience star wars was the movies obviously and then the eu which then they removed from canon i was very sad because i feel like the new jedi order would have made a better sequel series but whatever <laughs> um, I was hopeful, and then I watched The Force Awakens. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. After that, my expectations were very low, and somehow they got even lower with the Rise of Sky or not Rise of Skywalker on uh, Last Jedi. Yeah, Rise of Skywalker was all right, but then they had to do two movies in the same time because Last Jedi fucked everything up. Just yeah, Disney just needs to stop, stop doing what they're doing and stop milking dead things. It's like Rockstar and GTA. It just it, all of it needs to stop. Like, fucking, what's the the CEO lady's name? She's like, oh, 
we don't have any source material that we can pull from to create good content for Star Wars anymore. And then there's just the whole expanded universe. But like, I don't know. That's what Dave they're stealing do. from without <laughs> stealing from. Like it's our IP, it's our IP, but we can't use it anyway. Sorry, Will. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think at the time Disney acquired Star Wars, it was like you know the height of the MCU. Everybody was stoked, right? Mm -hmm. Marvel was making cool stuff. Disney buying that intellectual property doesn't guarantee new films, but I think everyone knew we're getting new movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and like Forrest said, we were all really optimistic up until we saw The Force Awakens, and we're like, oh. And The Force Awakens isn't even that bad. It's just it's super duper unoriginal. I think that was everyone's complaint was we thought we were going to get to see these original trilogy characters back. We were looking forward to seeing Luke again. Like, mm -hmm. we wanted some lightsabers. And they give us, like, a, a New Hope knockoff with better CGI. Like, and I like the new Stormtrooper designs. I thought those were super cool. I think the First Order Trooper helmet First, design yeah. is is the coolest thing about the sequel trilogy. Like it really is. Um, and I think Kylo Ren being an angry, petulant child is fantastic. Like, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was fun in that film. I think it gets really old by the third film. Um, yeah. The fact that he never developed into anything like more yeah. sinister is just stupid. Um, they tried in the last Jedi, but failed. Well, here's the thing. The original plan. I mean, have you guys seen that, that, uh, the video on YouTube, the guy, the guy who like animated what the original plan for uh, episode nine was supposed to be. We reacted to it. Did oh, we? okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like he was supposed to kind of go full bad guy, right? Yeah. Like he was supposed to completely go evil, you know, embrace the dark, and and Ray wasn't gonna like save him because you know he's he's evil. Mm -hmm. Um, and they they just were reading Raylo fanfics on like Wattpad or something and decided to change the story. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Sorry, oh. the the words sounded wrong coming out of my mouth too. I know, I, hate, I know they're hard to hear. I the hate whole, that whole romance did not make any sense. Like that's yeah. that's like I I don't mean to make this a a uh, fucking Disney sequel crap talk session, right? But like yeah. If you're going to put romance in Star Wars, which I think Han, Leia, Anakin, uh, uh, Anakin, Padme, and Sat uh, Satine and Obi-Wan, that's fine, man. That's fine. But it has to make sense. It has There has yeah. to be a reason for it instead of, oh, well, a couple of TikTok profiles like this. So let's let's put it on the big screen. Yeah. I just... It, it, uh, um, and anyway. like, I think they could have written it well. Like, I think if, for some reason, during the second film, Ray had gotten to know Kylo through hearing things about what Ben Solo used to be, mm -hmm. I think maybe there could have been a chance for that. Um, but, like, the only explanation I get is, that, like, she's never spoken to a real human ever, and he's, like, the first one that isn't brown. Um, <laughs> and she instantly calls him a thief and beats the shit out of him? Yeah, I'm convinced that, that <laughs> Disney was just like, hey, like we, we want to set up this this male love interest for our female protagonist. Is there anybody in here who's light skin? And <laughs> and and like you just you just watch as like Oscar Isaac and uh, and John Boyega just look at each other and just like, <laughs> like uh, 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 not us. <laughs> yeah. Um and 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 it's like they could have gone any other direction with her romance arc or just not had one. Cause I think female characters are allowed to exist without a, a romance yeah. arc. I would have um, been fine with her without the forced romance. Yeah. And Thank like, you. and they just went with the most difficult to achieve arc and then they butchered it. So yeah. And that's, I, I don't have much more to add on to that. Cause like, Jesus, I like, <laughs> Like honestly, okay, I think I think it was with you, Forrest, or with Brady. I really didn't know Star Killer wasn't canon until The Force Awakens, right? Like George had never, like I guess, had never made him canon, right? Um, it's from what I've heard, but I think it was with you that I'm like, I, I think I was. It was. It was. It, it's what led to my rage. And yes, I I am a Star Killer fanboy. I understand he's OP though. I am self-aware. 
I'm self-aware. I understand he's OP, but the way I found out is I think I was talking to you or Brady, and I was like, wait, so Starkiller's not canon, right? No, he's not. Well, why? Well, I thought they were going to have him be the big bad guy because they named a base after him. And then it's like, well, yeah, Starkiller was Luke's original last name. I was like, okay. But like, yeah, that was as, me. Yeah, I'm like, and I'm like, but why use the name Star Killer if you're not gonna have Star Killer in the movie? And then it's like, it's like because like Disney's not smart. Well, why the? And then I went off for months and months and months. He's still going I, off yeah. occasionally. I I still ha- I still have outbursts. It's like I don't like. I I had a, a back and forth with someone like when this first came out. I think I was working like a bowling alley or something, and they were like. Like, well, they never indicate the Star Killer's getting in the movie. I'm like, they named a whole ass planet after him. There was nothing related to Star Killer, like, bef- post Star Killer. Like, like, Luke Star Killer was gone. That wasn't a thing. George changed that to Luke Skywalker. So everything that's named Star Killer is based off the character. But uh, I. I think your last outburst was um, the. Inquisitor Star Killer helmet that appeared in one of the shows. No, it wasn't the Inquisitor. It was an Andor. It was yes. the, it was the helmet and some of the armor that they had. And I'm yeah, like, that. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Yeah, like as far as Easter eggs go, that's a really bad one because it makes you ask questions about what's happening in universe. Like, how could he possibly have one of those? Not, oh, cool, that's a Indiana Jones reference. Like, exactly. Like, instead of just, like, having the Ark of the Covenant, like, in the background is, like, an Easter egg, which is obviously an Easter egg, it makes you ask questions. You're like, how does he have that? <laughs> is that what I think it is? Exactly. The Ark of the Covenant appears? No, I'm saying they should have done oh. that. Yeah, it would have been just... funny. Like, if, like in the oh. background, you see, like, the wing of, like, the top of the box, and you're like, ah, oh. you know? Because that's how Easter eggs are supposed to work, right? You're supposed to understand that it's a prop in a movie, not a reference to something else in universe that makes no sense being there. Exactly. It's like, it's it wasn't like, even canon. It was fan art. It's, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, up until it broke the whole, um, death star in, uh, end game, right. Or was it end game that the death star was in that they had was the, Lego, the Lego death star. Oh yeah. Oh, was it home? Was it homecoming? That was homecoming. That was homecoming. Okay, yeah. yeah. But it's like, oh, hey, that's a nod to something that, that they already own. You know what I mean? Like, uh, okay. Right. Cool. Yeah. And but, like, they just don't do Easter eggs well in Star Wars anymore. Exactly. And and my next little co- complaint or question, right, for you and Forrest and myself and all the people, you know, who aren't watching at home. What do you feel about the cameos nowadays? Now let me let me let me let me primer this with what used to be a cameo was like and I know it's a sensitive topic right now, but Trump in Home Alone, right? Oh yeah. That was yeah. a that that's a cameo, right? He shows up and you're like, oh hey, it's that person, and then they go. What are your feelings about the cameos in Star Wars stuff now? Well, uh, I love Saw Gerrera, so <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no, uh, they're stupid. Like they make no sense half the time. Um, the only time it's it's helpful is if it aids the plot, especially in these like s- like Mandalorian Ahsoka era shows where you kind of can't go through the universe without bumping into somebody that you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think, what's the most like obnoxious cameo outside of Saw Gerrera? Uh, you could even say character or actor, as in like Jack Black. People were calling that a cameo. Lizzo was a cameo. Oh, yeah, the cameo. No, that episode was funny. I mean, that was I, hilarious. Like, when, but like when I mean like when people say that fully fledged roles are a cameo. I mean, in my, in my opinion, because I feel like again, a cameo is like something that's boom and then it happens. It's not, hey, this is like a guest star. Yeah, a guest star. Yeah. Oh, you, oh well. They, yeah, then, then yeah. Um, if it's just like slipping somebody in, it's got to be interesting. I think the the most egregious use of cameos is probably the Bad Batch season one. As far as like character cameos go, like every episode you spot somebody that you know from something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
and sorry to cut you off, but like when I no, 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 go for it on like the the subject of cameos, like John Williams was in the Rise of Skywalker. He was a bartender. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Uh, yeah, and you actually it's when they're going to get C three PO's mind wiped that it. Oh, that's he's cool. A bar, he's a bartender with one eye, and a lot of people are like, oh, that's a dope cameo. I'm like, you can't call like. Like some people are even saying, like Cad Bane showing up in the book of Boba Fett was a cameo. No, it's not. No, that's cameo. just a part of the story. Exactly, it's so, a cameo. Like... If you see him in like the background, you just see the hat. Just see him off in the distance somewhere. That's a cameo. But yeah. reappearing for three, four episodes. No, 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 no. It's not a cameo. Do you? Do I you think. Got... Well, I think it's fair to say that while that's the established definition we have for cameos, Disney clearly doesn't understand that and they see the desire for cameos as a desire for everything to guest star someone else even when it makes no sense mm -hmm. and and that's i guess is like is it a cameo though if it doesn't have a payoff or is it just a wasted character because realistically like obviously if cad bane's dead and we have a book of boba fett part two what and people claim that's a cameo or to the point of um and now this is spoiler territory. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but Acolyte, where we have Plagueis. Oh, yeah. We have Plagueis show up, and we have uh, Yoda show up, which Yoda's not a cameo. We've known about him for, like, 50 freaking years. But, yeah. but we have, you know, spoilers, Plagueis show up. If they just don't do anything with that, is that a cameo, or is it just a wasted appearance? That's a good question. Um... I mean, by the traditional definition of cameo, it doesn't count. I think by what cameos have become mm -hmm. to to Disney and Star Wars and Marvel, yeah. But it's definitely a waste of a character if we never see them again. Um, yeah. Regardless of how we feel about the cameo or not cameo, it's a waste of a character if we never see that go anywhere. And that's, again, that's just kind of stepping off or stemming off from the, uh, the whole Easter egg thing. And that, that just... That got me going. That got me hot. <laughs> the whole Star Killer thing. Yeah. Like, like Will Will's completely right. Like it's that's the thing is like, and this is the obvious argument I always make. It's like it's key jangling, right? It's kind of like a hey, and I'm not saying like and or for me, it wasn't for me. I just I I it, I'm not saying it was bad. I I just wasn't engaged with the story. I'll so. say it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> You'll get your head taken off by the internet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I guess I should ask, and and Taylor, I've watched some of your previous videos. Did you ever end up finishing Andor? I did not finish it, no. How far did you get? Uh, episode four, I believe. Okay, so that's like past the first arc into the second one. They're like getting ready to, to raid the Imperial garrison, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that Andor is unbearably slow at times. And I think that's why a lot of people get turned off by it. I think the intro was way longer than it needed to be. I think gearing up, getting ready to, you know, attack the garrison way longer than it needed to be. Um, but I think the like the last two arcs of Andor were actually pretty solid. Um, mm, okay. It's just disappointing that you have to get through a snooze fest to get to the good parts. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm one who appreciates the slow stuff. Like I actually enjoyed Andor. It's not for everyone, but I enjoyed it. Um, the problem is, is it sets this standard for Disney Star Wars shows that says you can do pretty much nothing for half the show and we're still going to call it art, um, which Forest, is, what, up. which is what the Acolyte did essentially. Um, I, I watched your, your review on that. You guys are right. The first half of that show is just like, like nothing happens. Complete snooze fest. Yeah. I, um. It, with Andor for me, this is like my my take, right? And I've, I actually made a a, a video on Andor, and I, it was basically, I said I didn't watch Andor. I watched, I watched four, three, four episodes of it. It wasn't for me. Nothing against Andor, but if you're a fan of Andor, I've noticed that there's a, a huge thing of people attacking people who don't like Andor, right? I got destroyed in the comments. Like, oh, Andor is amazing. Why are you saying it sucks? I'm like, not once did I ever say it sucked. My issue with Andor is that I was fine with, Ka like, Cassian had his arc for me in Rogue One. 
Like he was part of the corrupt rebellion. They were all, they were all he, at the, at the beginning of it, he's shooting a, a fellow rebellion member and killing him because you know, he's dead weight. Right. Yeah. Well, by the end of the movie, he's going off with his own group of people sticking to what they believe. He's part of this actual rebellion and he's sacrificing himself for the rebellion. To me, that's the arc. I'm like, okay, Cassian died. And I know it's controversial in Star Wars because a lot of the stories being told are already stories of people who have died. But that's kind of like he's a, he was a side character to me that I really wasn't caring too much about. Like, I don't... And care. he got his redemption in the movie he was in. Yeah, he got his redemption. He had his arc. To me, again, that's just to me. I don't hate the actor. The char- like if they if they were to make a fucking movie about Yord, I would shit all over that because <laughs> yeah. I don't like the character. But Andor it takes place in a great time in Star Wars. It's it doesn't have anything to do with Jedi, which I love. I love the lower level grimy stories in Star Wars. He really does. I I was bummed that it wasn't about someone that I found to be an interesting character because they already had his time. Um, right. And that's just, that's, um, just, that's just my take. No. And I think that's a fair take in terms of like who they could have picked, like an original character could have been a really good choice. Um, to me, the fact that you already know Cassian and you know how he ends mm-hmm. in a lot of ways helps remove him from center stage. And what's left is a view into what I think is um, it's, it's less about the characters and more about the society, right? It's it, the whole purpose of Andor is to be a window into what living under a fascist regime looks, looks like. And when I say fascist, I mean, I don't mean the cheap way that you word is used in modern political discourse. I mean like an actual Nazi regime, yeah. right? An actual authoritarian regime. And they do a good job of showing what that looks like for the average person. And that's really what the show is actually about especially if you watch like the second half of the show um Mm. it is very much not the same kind of star wars as everything else it's not even the same kind of star wars as rogue one yeah like rogue one is definitely a a war movie in a lot of ways right um yeah and that's why i think in in terms of expectations and or just not the same kind of star wars i'm far more disappointed by star wars projects that claim to be the same kind of star wars that we're used to and then miss the mark shows like the book of Boba Fett shows like the Mandalorian season three, even, even a lot of ways Ahsoka for saying, Hey, this is what you're used to. And then not delivering. Exactly. And I agree with that. And that's exactly like that, that the, the discussion here is really what I liked about Andor is that it brings up so many different points. Like when you're like Cassie and, don't look at him as the center stage look at everybody around and everything else that's going around and all that other stuff as with like it's like i'd much rather them be like hey here's something that has nothing to do with what you're used to in star wars it's 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 again like even if they did a ro- uh, the canceled rogue squadron thing if they gave us freaking red yeah Ta- red tails star wars style i would absolutely love that but it's like you've given us so much lore on what a lightsaber is what the Jedi are what this and that like yes the Jedi the Jedi at at best they're keepers of the peace at worst they're absolutely stupid but I like there's a lot of things that put in the Jedi like they sent to to arrest the Dark Lord of the Sith right they send five Jedi I'm liking re- that all on, on Windu though to rescue that's racist to rescue, not that he's the next highest ranking person in the council by any means, but you know. Yeah. But to rescue one Jedi when they had no idea that Anakin nor Padme were on Geonosis to rescue one Jedi, they send two hundred and twelve. And lost get, like and got half of them and get half of them killed. Yep. So again, the Jedi, as Forrest said, nobody ever accused the Jedi of being smart. Um <laughs> But it's just like when you've given us something that when you give us what forty years worth of with backstory and lore and all that stuff, and examples of certain things you've even made canon, and then do it in extremely underwhelming, if not contradictory ways, people are gonna be pissed. Yeah. Like like when Fair. I 
when I covered Andor, or Andor, when I covered the Acolyte, it wasn't even about, oh, they should have done this. They could have done this. Why didn't they reference this? It's like, yo, bruh, in one episode, you literally say this. And then the next episode, you do this. Like, keep it consistent. Like, it's one episode. Spoilers. Soul kills Osha and May's mom. The next episode, he says, it was a mistake. I didn't mean to do it. But then... The next episode, he's like, I made the right choice. I was protecting you. Yeah. The, like, the writing was all over the place for that show. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and it had so much potential. That was actually the show I was most excited about. Because it's supposed to be the first show that steps out of the shadow of the Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. And it, it was just a weird show. I mean, like, the action sequences were cool. Oh, yeah. The lightsaber fights were cool. I mean, like, I think the stranger is a really interesting and cool villain slash character. Maybe, maybe he's not the villain, you know, like who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but like outside of what is it? Episode five where they have like that massive lightsaber battle, like the rest of the show kind of sucks. And like, not for like lore breaking reasons, mostly for like production reasons. Like every scene, like the space witches are in feels like something out of a Broadway play. Like the camera <laughs> angles are just so trash. They're just like, exactly. they just stay there. Everything looks like there's just like a stage background. I think it's because they're using that like that uh, like 3D screen technology yeah. they use for the Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what anyone says. That is not a like a, a magic tool that replaces classic filmmaking techniques mm-hmm. because it just makes every background look slightly blurry. Yeah, it's it's like I understand with COVID, and I understand they were trying it out new for the Mandalorian and everything. But when you've got a multi-billion dollar company that just doesn't want to go shoot on location or wants to cheap out, like the Book of Boba Fett, apparently um, there was some, what was it? There was, like, that was they were shooting shooting during COVID, obviously, with the Book of Boba Fett, which to me, I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, if you're going to shoot during a pandemic, just don't shoot at all, man. Like, just, like, yeah. wait, wait till you, but I understand, like, production you're supposed to get it out by this time whatever but i guess they were shooting like some rooftop stuff during that lovely amazing chase scene with the scooters <laughs> yeah and, and i guess what happened is they actually showed some like they've gone back and edited but they show like that it's a set like you can see behind one of the walls of the set when they're really? shooting yeah huh. and i'm like like I didn't notice that, obviously, but um, someone pointed it out. It's kind of like gray shirt guy in the Mandalorian with the with the watch. Yeah, got the blue jeans and the watch. You know, like that stuff's gonna flub up. But like when you just can't, it, it, to me, good example is Kenobi. Right when Vader and Kenobi are having that fight for the first time, their first fight back, half the fight is like from a hundred yards away. It's not up close showing Obi-Wan's face and Vader's face being pissed off and stuff. Oh, it's, yeah. It's it's far back. It's like wide shots of just lightsabers flapping around, and you're like, what's going on? Next thing for me is the score in a lot of the new stuff. Yeah, it's trash. Yeah, music music is like the one thing you have to get right about Star Wars. And I haven't really been paying attention to the music, honestly. I'm just so disappointed with the filmography and just the story of it. I haven't had time to focus on the music. Yeah, I. Uh, it to me, it, it died with uh, what, what the f- with Kenobi. Kenobi, they didn't have any good music, and then the acolyte was eh. Ludwig Garson, yeah. I think that's his name. He hit, he knocks it out of the park. But the Book of Boba Fett score was good, but the theme song I didn't like. Um, it was just such a weird choice. Like, yeah, they couldn't properly make a good score for that show because the show didn't know what it was about. Mm. So they just had to kind of like wing it. Well, exactly. And that's, let's kind of, I kind of want to rotate this pivot. Yeah. Um, (laughs) back to, to being a a prequel, a prequel kid and stuff like that. I guess if we want to compare, the prequels to the sequels right you felt like you had a really good meal with all three movies it wasn't like amazing like 
you go to a five star restaurant and it's like, okay, cool, but you just didn't get the caviar. I, you know what I mean? Like mm. it was, you were full, you were fine. Like I was like, damn, okay, let's. Like I can it, honestly watch one, two, three, four, five, six, and feel like I didn't miss anything in between. Yeah. Like that's just me. Like like the whole Death Star plans thing. That was. Andor is probably to me one of the most important stories because it covers a big plot hole. <laughs> <laughs> as the Rogue what, One or Andor? Oh, R- Rogue One. Sorry, Rogue One. Um, it covers that plot hole, but really everything else is just a toy. Like it's, <laughs> um, so if you were to say introduce someone to Star Wars nowadays, right? Where would you want them to start, and what would you tell them not to pay attention to? Given everything we said, obviously, like, like I want a second to think about that. I'd have them start OT, prequels, and then sequels. Just and then nitpicking TV shows after that. Cause yeah, cause like I said, like some of the shows you could do without. But you know. start start them off with the the basics, the movies. Then after that, introduce them to the Clone Wars, and then start nitpicking after that. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I think I'd agree with that. I think the original trilogy is where you want to start. Um, as much as I like, <clears throat> as much as I like the the watch in order method, um, half the fun of episode five is the big reveal. Yeah, I mean, like, if they already know that Darth Vader is is Anakin Skywalker and Anakin's Luke's father, then like, fine, like start him off with episode one. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with doing like at least four and five first. I've heard some people do like four, five, one, two, three, six. I, I have done that. It's actually really satisfying. Yeah, I think that's cool. Um, if I had to pick Star Wars media to like skip or cut out, um, I might be like, hey, like don't waste your time watching that. Um, oddly enough, I would actually skip Clone Wars. Really? I love the Clone Wars. I just think that there's so much in Clone Wars that's just like isn't necessary to have a good experience with Star Wars. That's true. Yeah. I, I um I'll go ahead for sorry. It. Go ahead, go ahead. I heard that actually from a couple friends of mine as well. Um they what they've done is apparently on Apple TV you can make custom playlists for um TV shows. Oh, they've gone cool. through and um put the Clone Wars in chronological order so they can watch it that way. Yeah, because they're not all in order. Like the air order isn't chronological for some stupid reason. Yeah, apparently that's the way they can only watch. And I'm like, well, I'm just gonna watch it in order to release because I'm stubborn and I don't want to do all that because there's <laughs> what like nine seasons now. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's it's a lot, man. And like, there are some parts that are cool and contribute to the story. I think answering who Sifo-Dyas is is a yeah very important thing that it does. That's my one complaint about episode two. Is that growing up, I didn't understand what what they were talking about. I was like, "Stuff what?" Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I didn't ever watch it with with subtitles, so I didn't know what they were saying. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. just like, it, "It's like they just mumbled while they were saying that word," and I was like, "Did I miss something? I I must have missed something. There's there's no way. Doesn't there's no way? Isn't it Obi Wan who goes Master Who? Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't Obi Wan himself be like? Yeah, he says that, and then when the uh, Camino and repeats himself. He's like, he fucking died ten years ago. Yeah, right. That's... And and we're all just like, is this like another name for somebody we know of? Like, the only Jedi we for... know of that died ten years ago is Qui Gon. So like, why? Who is this other guy? Like, it... for the longest time, I sense. thought Sifo Dyas was Dooku's real name, and then yeah. I found out Dooku was his name, and his Sith name is Tyrannus. Yeah, I, I that also would have been fine. Yeah, I was. I was under the impression. No, um, <laughs> uh, I always thought that it was Dooku's, like Dooku's Jedi name, and then he faked his death, pops up as Dooku, and then they're like Count Dooku. You know what I mean? Like it's like Count Dooku's a political idealist, not a murderer. Yeah, like the idea <laughs> that they were going to use some like no face, no name character we've never seen as a major plot device, and not they don't need to tell us the whole story. Like they could have added one or two lines of dialogue that explain that it's a character you've never met before, but it's a yeah. full fledged character. 
that you've just never met. And and they kind of botched that. Not that George Lucas has ever been good at dialogue, but you know. I've told this to Taylor. George Uncle Lucas George. is the best and worst thing to happen to Star Wars. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so I can pause this recording and give you guys a tech, second to think of this. To end this out, because we're 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 at that point. I want to get I want to get your Star Wars hot take, your hottest Star Wars take, and then give a did you know type of thing. But I can pause it if we need, so you can take your star and be like, "This is my Star Wars hot take on all of Star Wars, or on a certain era that might be." Of course, you know what a hot take is. I know. I'm trying to think of uh, one. <laughs> but like I said, I can pause and give us give you guys a second if you need. Okay, I've, I've got mine. You got yours, Forrest? Do you need a yeah. second? I'll, yeah, I, I'll need a second, but Will can go into detail on his. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Will. Okay, so I already told you guys my hot take that I think Dave Filoni is the worst thing to happen to Star Wars in a long time, and I thought that for a long time, so we're, we're not going to cover that. Um, can make a whole episode just on that, but oh, we're not going to do that. Um, hot take? I think that the Jedi outfits in the prequel trilogy are stupid. I think the robes make no sense. I understand that they're like, yeah, but they're like samurai. They're like monks. I'm like, okay, but are they also like knights? Where's the armor, guys? Where is it? You only see it all, like in the Clone Wars. Not even like a main movie does a Jedi wear armor, okay? Here's the thing. I get it if they're samurai. You know what samurai do? Wear armor. <laughs> you know what samurai do? Like, they wear armor. Yeah, oh, like yeah. I don't mind if, if they're like spiritual and magical and wizardy, okay? But the whole point of Obi-Wan wearing what he wears in episode four is that that's what people on Tatooine wear. Like, what are the odds that this galactic organization of peacekeeper warriors with laser swords happens to wear the native garb of some random ass planet in the outer rim? <laughs> and that's their uniform. Like, yep. it makes no sense. And it kind of ruins the aesthetic. Like, people like the Old Republic and the High Republic eras because the Jedi feel more like like the original idea of Jedi, right? Yeah. They feel like knights. People like the Old Republic because they got Jedi wearing armor and Sith that have helmets and, like, all kinds of cool stuff. Like, people liked Kylo Ren's crossguard lightsaber when it first came out because it reminded them of, like, a bastard sword, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, if if I could go back and fix one thing about Star Wars, I think that they've just like 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 didn't think about it's that the Jedi wear Tatooine clothing as as their uniform. I, I that's something that I've always like been confused about because like even with like you had the two thousand three miniseries where they're wearing armor, and they don't wear like obviously that bridges episode one to episode two, but they don't wear it in episode two. They don't wear the armor in episode two, and then they don't, or no, that bridges episode two to episode three. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Um, but they don't also don't wear it at the end of the Clone Wars, in episode three, which really confuses me. Which is probably I, when they need it the most. I understand the robes when they're not actively in battle, but yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense that uh, if they are knights, will go into battle wearing armor. Go when they're on mission, at least have some sort of fucking protection instead of just wool robing yeah like exactly and like it's so weird to me that the jedi when they wrote that for the prequel trilogy they're like oh like it's an order of monks i'm like no it would make way more sense if they're like feudal it's like a feudal system before the empire right mm -hmm. so it's like you have lords and you have knights that serve under lords and like you have multiple factions of knights that don't always get along right mm -hmm. and instead they're like yeah, we just don't have budget for that, man. And and we got what we got. George. <laughs> <laughs> I can go off about George Lucas, man. Uh, yes. I, don't know, I don't know if I want to go off on my hot take. Like, I have two hot takes. So I'll probably go off on one of them. I don't want to. I'm crucified. still trying to think. So you, you do you. Okay. Um, I guess I'll do my did you know. And you guys probably do know, maybe. Did you know that Quinlan Voss is in the Phantom Menace? Yes. Oh, you yes. Knew that? You guys, you knew that for us? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Has that been explained? Yes. 
what what's oh, the has... meaning behind what's the meaning behind that? Yeah, so I, I can't remember it's it's a canon comic, I think. Somebody can fact check me which canon source they they did it. It wasn't supposed to originally be Quinlan Voss, right? In the same way that like the dude with the white bushy beard wasn't originally supposed to be Rex in episode six, and now it is. Um they went back and they did it, and supposedly Quinlan Voss was actually undercover, like doing stuff on Tatooine at the same time. And he sees Qui-Gon and recognizes him, but chooses not to blow his own cover by reaching out to help. And only later does he find out what was going down, and he wishes that he had stopped them and offered to help. Um, huh. Because he never gets to speak to Qui-Gon again after that, right? Because Qui-Gon dies. So it's like one of his big regrets is that he didn't blow his own cover and, and you know, abandoned his mission to go help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. I'm actually, I'm actually checking that out right now. I'll have to do yeah. some digging. I'll have to do some Supposedly, digging. according to the internet, and again, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's a fanfic. If that's a fanfic, that's a damn good fanfic. Um, and that's the thing. This is like, I wish they would allow more fans, you know, like, or they'd hire... Not not just some random fan, but when they hire writers, they hire writers who are familiar with the source material. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to say this, and, and this is someone who thinks the Acolyte did a lot of things very poorly. Um, they did have people working on that project who like knew their stuff. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of really interesting stuff they do in that show. Um, it's just very poorly executed because I think whoever was in charge of the overall vision wasn't very good at making films. So, yeah. What's your hot take? Do you have one yet for us? Well, I thought of something. I'm not necessarily sure it's a hot take, but I feel like Plo Koon would have been a better Grandmaster than Yoda. Hmm. It's, it's probably true. I, I and that's that. I I don't disagree with you there because it's kind of hard to be like. <sighs> People will be like, well, he's not as experienced. Yeah, but Yoda is 800 years, and he fucking is still dumb as shit. Yeah. <laughs> not that he's dumb as shit. Just, <laughs> he is locked in his own house. I mean, mm. how the hell are you going to break 800 years of fucking tradition from one person? And yeah. Plo Koon is uh, put in a D&D &D, like, alignment scale. He's true neutral. Yoda will be lawful good as far as i'm aware yoda's chaotic neutral yeah. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe uh original trilogy yoda fucking chaotic <laughs> bashing the no smack it yeah <laughs> With the freaking um i got my hot take it's i'm picking one out of three i'm picking one all out right. of three and i'll let's buy hear it hill. anakin versus obi-wan isn't the greatest duel of all time and I know I've I've said that on the Phantom in uh, Revenge of the Sith. It's not the greatest duel. Okay, what's, yeah, what do you think is the greatest duel of all time? Vader versus, versus Luke. R2. No, Vader versus Luke in Return of the Jedi. That's a good fight. To me, it has the physicality. It has it, yes, the choreography is a it's it's a it's a product of its time, but it's still better yeah. than its last the two movies. Yeah. This oh god! So I could I could do a whole hour Three. long rant on the sequel Dude, fights. Here's like the sequel lightsaber fights suck because the, they don't want to pay the VFX artists to rotoscope the lightsabers anymore. That's 100 percent what's going on. Well, yeah, it's that, and they just uh, anyway. I'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, because the the dynamic of Luke going on this journey to bring his father back to the light, knowing damn well and good, the Emperor and Vader could just right at any point in time. He goes on the suicide mission and he almost succumbs to the dark side and mm. he takes, he gets electrified for his father. Cause he knows his father that there's good in him and Vader turning, picking up fecking Palpatine. And I do not count the whole, no, no. And he throwing the whole, that's the best bit of dialogue ever. Come on. Shut. <laughs> um, but to me, that is more impactful than even just half of the Anakin Obi Wan fight on Mustafar. I get that it's theatrically cool looking, and they swing in from the George of the Jungle cables and all that other stuff. But to me, again, it kind of like 
I, I've got a lot of flack for this, for saying this, because I think we did our rate the duels and someone reached out to me about this. But I had said that just the contradiction of having Anakin choke out Padme while she's pregnant with her, with what he thinks just is one child, and then turning to Obi-Wan and be like, you fucking did this. <laughs> um, is is a lot is a lot different than they honestly could have done that whole what what's the word I'm looking for the whole cliche of Padme accidentally getting hurt because there there is unused footage that I put up on my uh, on my shorts where Anakin it's Hayden and he actually pushes Padme back and lifts her up against a wall and he's mm-hmm. choking her. Until Obi Wan says something, and then he turns around and looks back, and then drops her. And I'm like, uh, "No, <laughs> like I, I, I don't know. I wish that fight had like had a clear difference too of fighting style between Vader and Anakin. We do see more mm-hmm. punches and kicks and stuff, and him choking him by the throat. But I wish there could have been a little bit." more heavy handedness but yes that's my hot take is that i mean i agree with that the the last jet or return of the jedi is better than revenge of the sith because one luke is very as far as we know at that point inexperienced with lightsaber combat so that's why he's making all the wild and wide swinging as far as we know at that time all he really has is force premonition and what most pretty much all jedi use during combat so they can at least block efficiently and then when Vader starts taunting him with Leia, he gets even more wild and crazy because he's pissed off. It all it just flows for me. Yeah, you you see you see both sides of it, and that's kind of again to me. And I don't mean to steamroll over you guys. Um, is where I hold just the last like thirty seconds of of Maul versus Qui Gon or Maul versus Obi Wan in such high esteem. Is because we see that whole that the force really isn't just black and isn't there's no like it's black and white like people they now claim apparently in Star Wars that if you get mad that means your the the dark side is coming forward right um <laughs> no because we see that like the Obi Wan gets pissed because his master was just shank city right in front of him yeah but he, yeah he handles his business. Up until Dave Filoni did Dave Filoni things, Maul was dead, which I love Darth Maul just as much as the next person. I wish he would have stayed dead. He served his purpose. He was the bad guy that made way for the big bad guy. Darth Maul should have stayed dead. It's another hot take. But And then <laughs> Luke, Luke going off on Vader in episode uh, six, we see that. Now people are backtracking and they're like, because um, people are like, why didn't why didn't obi-wan's saber bleed then why didn't luke's saber bleed then and some people on they defend they're they're like why was anakin's lightsaber blue for this whole time (laughs) especially after he murdered little children and a bunch of his colleagues yeah well he wasn't fully to the dark side until padme's death it's like um did you not see when he turned and his eye was red yeah, and like the logical explanation for the saber bleeding the acolyte is that she's touching the crystal because the saber is cracked. Which I, again, I read that and it's just so like so dumb. The way they okay, every time we've seen a saber get bled on screen, video game. Or, I mean, we've only seen three saber crystal bleeds, right? There's Darth Vader in the comics. There's Dagon Gera in Jedi Survivor, and then there's there's the acolyte, right? Of the three, the two that are done on screen are two of the most cringy scenes in all of Star Wars. Exactly. Like, Dagon Gara wakes up, and he opens his lightsaber and immediately starts bleeding his crystal in front of Cal, like, I'm evil now! Yeah. Because I'm mad, I have to be evil! And Cal's like, oh, he bled his crystal. Number one up, ignites his lightsaber. Like, <laughs> like, they literally just start fighting because dude has a red lightsaber now. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Where in Legends, Luke had a red Shoto saber, and yeah, it was that wasn't associated with Sith at, necessarily. I mean, yes, yeah, Sith had a lot of red crystals, but expanded universe, red crystals were Sith incised. Yeah, so like, I, I don't mind the idea of like red primarily being bad now. I just think that every time they've executed that, like demonstrated that on screen, it's always for a really stupid reason. 
Yeah. 90 percent of Dagging Gareth's fucking dialogue <laughs> was yelling Tanalore, so I'm surprised Dude, he didn't say that while bleeding the crystal. You just know that all that like old republic or no like the high republic nonsense they shoehorned into that game was the studio telling them that's what that's what disney wants them to do because that was not the original plan for that game at all you look at all like the little like easter eggs and stuff they hid in the first game it was not going in that direction i just oh my gosh i i don't you, you so you've played it right Forrest. you played it all the way through right yeah the bowed stuff was so much more interesting than anything with dagon it made me sad because all I could hear was Charles. Oh God! Have you played Red Dead, William? Uh, parts of it. I, I I liked it. I just couldn't get past the fact that I had to eat constantly. Like that drove me crazy. Yeah, I didn't eat constantly. <laughs> Forrest, you ate too much stew. All right, that's I... online. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, the the stuff with with Bode was so much more interesting um, to me. For some reason, I thought Bode was going to be behind everything, but he was just kind of like he was a sneak thief. Um, but that makes me want to be like, okay, well, let's get some more. Make a make an animated thing about Bode. Let's see what he was like in the council. Let's see all this other stuff. I would love and that. Every side character that Disney apparently just doesn't care about, like Bode or freaking Balin Skull, is infinitely better than anybody they put front and center. Which yeah. Is sad. Which is I mean, sad. like. It would be super cool to see, you know, a Clone Wars show short with General Balin Skull, right? And instead, what did we get as like the last uh, shorts they released? We got one on like Morgan Elspeth for like three episodes. And like Barris. no one asked for that. Yeah. yeah, and then Barris's stupid arc where like she dies at the end. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> Love if there are any love... Barris fanboys out there who haven't seen it and are mad that I spoiled that, you know what? Like they can just screw themselves. It's fine. I, I love I how you um, in the acolyte. I, I, no, she's not in the acolyte. I love how William's like, yeah, and she dies. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like, you know, we all just assume she's dead by the time we get to anything <sighs> Rebels related, and th- as soon as we saw she was going to get an arc, it's like, yeah, she's going to die at the end of this arc. Like, they're not going to have her continue to live just so she can pop up in, like, some Ahsoka material later, like a bad fanfic. Um, although I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past Dave to add a new favorite toy that he can never put down. And that's that's what I saw a lot of stuff was going to, like, they thought that Barris was going to show up at the end with Thrawn. And she was, oh, yeah. She, she full sent to being they a They still bad haven't guy. shown Thrawn yet? Oh, they did in Ahsoka. They did. It was oh, kind of okay. bad. I, 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 I liked his voice okay-ish in Rebels, but, like, you can recast. You guys know that, right? Like, you recast all the other voice actors. Why do we pick this one? I mean, they recasted fucking Lawrence Howard with um, fucking Rhodey, or whatever his name is. The Terrence second Howard. Rhodey. Yeah, Terrence yeah. Howard. Yeah, but, I mean, like, whenever they go from, like, animated to live action, I feel like they've recast the actors. I mean, like, Rosario Dawson plays Ahsoka, even though... She had nothing to do with any of those animated projects, right? She's a terrible Ahsoka. I said it. I don't care. It's funny. I got a buddy who thinks that. And, like, I think she gets some of the mannerisms down, but I can totally see why people don't like her. Like, well, I get it. Well, I understand. I understand the stoic Jedi thing. We got that with Luke, right? Is you mature as a Jedi. You become yeah. more stoic and all that stuff. Like, we saw that even, even with Qui-Gon. Like, Qui-Gon didn't have too much expression in his voice. But granted, Ahsoka was voiced, and you kind of—that's all you really got to go off of when you're doing the voice mm-hmm. acting. Yeah, Ahsoka had a ton of life behind her, and Rosario Dawson is kind of—it seems like she's high half the time. She's, she's, yeah. There's no up or anything like. Even that episode with Anakin, where she's like, "I choose to live." It's like, "I choose to live." Yeah, like she's like, better in Men in Black too. And after that, I don't know what else she's been in besides Ahsoka. Uh she was in in Daredevil. For like a hot minute. I didn't watch Daredevil. Daredevil was good. Um, no, Daredevil was really good, which is why yeah, I'm he like. Me that and yells at me to watch it. It's good. That and um, Yeah, Daredevil and Punisher were both good. Um, Iron Fist is good if you're the kind of person who still watches Arrow. Um, and then, as much as I hate to admit it, I did kind of enjoy um, The Defenders. Like, it's not good. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> exactly. And that's that's where I kind of want to bring this to, right? 
is yeah. that that's my opinion on the acolyte. I love Arrow. I love Legends of Tomorrow, but I yeah. know they're, I know they're corny as shit. Yeah, they're, they're corny as shit. But it's like I don't take it too seriously. And I've told so many people, I'm like, the acolyte could literally be seen like that because one episode you have this dude triple stabbing Jackie in the chest. Some of the darkest deaths we've seen in Star Wars. Yeah. The next episode, a girl's getting squirted in the eye with some oil. Oh my god! Like these these tongue in cheek fucking comedy things. I'm yeah. like, pick a route, dude. Like, like, could convict or have a conviction to something. Sorry, I'm tripping over my own words. But that's where I'm like, it's fine to like the acolyte. You just gotta know that it's bad. Like, it's not groundbreaking. <laughs> No, like, I mean, exactly. That's how I am yeah. Robin. Like you, you didn't have any like. I feel like any sort of impactful quotes they had, like there was one that Kamir said where he was like, "Only when you've lost everything are you free to do anything." And I'm like, "Motherfucker!" Isn't that, that a Jordan Peterson quote? I'm like, like wasn't? <laughs> isn't that a Jordan Peterson <laughs> quote? Like, I heard that fact check me on that too. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, like all the right wing news sources were like this new Disney Star Wars thing makes the villain quote Jordan Peterson. Like when they had the red skull quote Jordan Peterson. And I'm like, that doesn't surprise me. Like it's some like lefty Hollywood writer who thinks it's like a little like clever reference. I'm like, okay. And, and that's where I'm just like, and some of the other heart, like the hard hitting quotes are just literal Google yeah. Pinterest quotes. Like there's, there's, there's one that after the, one of the soul kills, one of the bugs, and Osha's like, oh, my God, I can't believe that I just witnessed murder. Um, not to mention that she goes on to murder the guy in the most, like, wild way possible. She chokes him out. Yeah. But anyway, then Jackie says, to watch something become one with the Force is a beautiful opportunity. <laughs> Come here. I'm going to watch you become one with the Force. You know, like. And this is the weird thing about the Acolyte is, like, if I just watch episode five, I would like, and nothing else, I would assume it's a great show. Yeah. I'd assume it's really cool, and, and it's 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 not the Game of Thrones of Star Wars. And Game of Thrones season eight was trash. I know that's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, Game of Thrones yeah. is fine. <laughs> I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> Minus season eight, no. Um, but like, you'd assume that it's like a, a darker, grittier, more interesting Star Wars, and you would be wrong if you watch the rest of the show. You find out that's not what's going on. Not at all. It doesn't it's see, giving off uh, Book of Boba Fett vibes. When I see clips of the Acolyte, I get the same vibe I get when I see that one fan film that Taylor hates with the Black Jedi with the Sub-Zero mask. All six of those guys versus Maul. Remember those? Oh, the Darth Maul Sith Apprentice short film? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're like in the forest and it's just like one giant lightsaber battle with like no dialogue. That's basically yeah. what that episode was. And then when they did have dialogue, it was stupid shit. Like, um, it's Ooh. when, it's when, so when, uh, again, Soul says, civilian to the ship, Yord, take her to the ship. That's your order from your master, dude. That's your order. So the civilian says, we have to go back. They're going to kill all of them. Yeah, that's why we're leaving. So we don't die. <laughs> so you can go back to the council and tell them what's going on here. Like, yeah, two brain like, cells rub them together. I'm like, like, yeah, you get these dope ass lightsaber fights, and then you get that. They're gonna kill them all. Let's lead these bugs back to take them out. Like I, I was surprised that they weren't didn't yeah. start. Oh my god. Anyway, the bug thing was goofy. Actually, you know, you're right. I was just too happy that we had more than one lightsaber on the screen at a time yes. to to realize the bug thing was kind of stupid. Yeah. Pretty like, colors. Like I won't even. I'm not even. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not even gonna joke. Like. I was like when they had cat when it was said that Daphne Keene was cast in this, I was like, she's gonna get dragged through the fucking mud. Like when everything else was starting to come out about the show, I was like, holy shit, dude, don't don't do Daphne Keene like that. Like, don't do her. She was great as X23. That's all I ever fucking saw her in. And she was great in this show, especially in that fight scene. Especially yeah. in that fight scene. Now, if I was reading the script of that show and I was like, oh, I get to go up against a badass dude in a mask. I get killed. I don't have to be in the rest of this shit. Cool. Yep. Like and That's probably what she thought, too. <laughs> um, she was like, thank God I get killed off in the fifth episode. <laughs> My God. Get that bag and dip. Um, 
and it's one of the coolest deaths in all of Star Wars. Like, it's a neat fight sequence. Um, yeah. And I hate to say this, but I think that a lot of Star Wars fight scenes feel kind of like fan films because they try to be too cool in strange ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a little bit of that feeling in that fight scene. Like, all the cool stuff that Kamira is doing with the, uh, you know, shish kebabbing Jedi and chopping their heads off and, like, mm-hmm. you know, fighting, you know, more dirty feels like something that, like, a hardcore fan film would have slipped in. They would have been like, this is so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like Edgelord stuff where they're just like, my character's cooler than your character. He can do all these things. Mm-hmm. And, like, I thought it was cool, but maybe they should have eased us into this. Like, we had years for Disney to give us lightsaber content, and they just haven't. Well, exactly. And here's the thing, too, with, with, with what exa- you're saying, Will, to your point. Literally, as this shit's going on where Kamir is blocking shit with cortosis and shish kebabbing people, snapping people's necks. Um, yeah. Literally, Yord in the forest is like, he, he doesn't fight with honor. He doesn't. F- Why are you telling me this? I'm watching it. Like, this is yeah. shit that should be told, like, this is why we don't do this. This is why we uh, don't do this. This is why we yeah. don't do this. Like, not, oh, hey, boom, look, now he's doing this. He, he's killing people. He's 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 blocking. He's not fighting with honor. He's doing cheating no stuff. No shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like... You're eating the curb in 4K, for real. Um, oh, my God, for real. Here's the thing. I know people were like, we kind of liked him. I'm like, yeah, because you thought he was hot. Like, not because you like the character, okay? Or his stupid haircut. Stupid. Is it Killmonger haircut? Like, oh, it was, it was the worst part is the worst fucking part about that is it's a fucking hairpiece. It's a yeah. fucking, it's a hairpiece. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe the dude's too old. And maybe those loose curls that that light skinned brother just, they just don't grow the same anymore. That they have to do that. <laughs> okay, fine. But you could have done any other fucking hairstyle in the existence of African American hairstyles and black hairstyles, and yep. you choose that. Fuck off, <laughs> dude. Uh, I'm so sick of it. They they gave it to Miles Morales in his own video game. Like another character where like they could have animated it any way they wanted, and they're just like, shunk. And they cut around the fucking. Yeah. Thing. I'm like, I'm like you do know that those dreads lay backwards, right? You can you can cornrow them and then just put the mask on. You don't need to be. Okay, now we know that we're looking for this black dude with this stupid ass dread haircut. That's Spider Man. Like, yeah, like nobody else is foolish enough to walk around New York with that dumb haircut. It's the one guy. <laughs> um, say goodbye to your secret identity. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I could, I could, I could shite on the acolyte all day, all night. Um, and again, it's not. It has nothing to do with the politics or who was hired for this or who was hired for that. When I, when I go on to watch a show and I do a review or whatever, I simply review what's right in front of me and what they've done, right? I don't – so many people are like, oh, well, she's a trans, non-binary, gay, LGBTQ this. That's why I don't like it. I'm like, you can be whatever you want. As long as the process and the product is good, then dope but when you contradict yeah. yourself five six seven eight episodes in a row what do you expect um but again i i think i think we're hitting time i think this is like one of the longest podcasts i've done in a long time oh yeah i can't believe it's been an hour and 45 minutes like <laughs> yeah. um we should do this again because y'all are 100%. super fun 100 yeah um i definitely think so usually, if you want to be in them, no, no pressure. Usually, when things come out, I'll review them the the night of, because like if it's like the acolyte or whatever, I'll do it the night of, and uh, because it's just me, it like in my in my in the Buckhead podcast, it's just me. Uh, if you guys would like to, or if anybody else would like to, I can wait to review it, and like we could just hop on here and and chop it up. I could even go live on Twitch or, or on YouTube. Yeah. Um, are you streaming any kind of gaming stuff or is it just like podcasty stuff? Um, I am. I'm doing I do playthroughs, reviews, um, and then it's been a while since I've like uploaded a game thing, but I'm doing a playthrough of Detroit Become Human right now. Oh, how's that going? Okay. <sighs> play it now. It's 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 on. It's it's free. Go play it. Um, right, you'll see. Uh, right. But anyway, thank you to Will and Forrest. 
It's been nice chopping it up. I definitely do want to whether whether it be cosplay stuff we talk about. I've done I've done uh, I I was with Skullkeeper a while ago. We were talking about Call of Duty cosplay community. We could definitely talk about like there's like would you rather's reaction videos, any of that type of stuff. I'll do here. Um, pop culture nerd stuff, anything, whatever it may be. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so, cosplay stuff will be fun. You're going to Fanix this year, yeah? Maybe one day. Maybe just one day. Thursday? Uh, probably to shop. So Okay, because <laughs> in that case, we should hang out, because I am boothing on Friday and Saturday, so I won't be available to walk around. Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah, if I go Thursday, sure. I'll let you know. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you to everybody. Thank you again, Will, for us. It was fun. I need some water, and I will see you all in the next one. Okay, all right, bye. This is fun. Later.